October, of course, is Respect Life Month. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about that in today's homily. I am opposed to the death penalty. In your eyes, does that make me liberal? I am opposed to abortion. In your eyes, does that make me conservative? I am opposed to wars that are unjust. In your eyes, does that make me liberal? I am opposed to the HHS mandate because it is a violation of our God-given religious liberty and freedom of conscience. In your eyes, does that make me conservative? I support a preferential option for the poor and the marginalized. In your eyes, does that make me liberal? I support traditional marriage between one man and one woman and oppose any type of gay marriage. In your eyes, does that make me conservative? I believe that immigrants, whether they're here legally or illegally, should be treated with respect and dignity. In your eyes, does that make you liberal? I am opposed to embryonic stem cell research. In your eyes, does that make me conservative? The fact of the matter is, I am neither liberal nor conservative. Simply put, I am Catholic. And yet, in discussing with many of you, or at least some of you, who are indeed partisans, you would like to project labels onto the church and its priests as being liberal or conservative, depending on your point of view. A Catholic who may be liberal would attack the church as being too conservative. A Catholic who is conservative would attack the church as being too liberal. This is a very common political practice. It deflects people's eyes from us and puts them on somebody else. <clears throat> but the church is neither liberal nor conservative. The church simply is. The church simply is the voice of God in this world. And God himself is neither liberal nor conservative, Democrat nor Republican. God simply is truth itself, the source of all truth in the universe. Why is it that when Catholics break with Catholic teaching, they usually do so along the lines of politics and ideology? Have you ever wondered why Catholics who are pro-abortion are almost always Democrat? Have you ever wondered why Catholics who are pro-death penalty are almost always Republican. It is because on some level they have given in to the loyalty demands of their parties and their ideologies. And this is something that has left a very harmful trail in its wake. These people are more likely to listen to politicians lying cheating, stinking, backstabbing, self-absorbed politicians than their own priests. And they are more likely to believe what their political parties and their ideology teaches than what their faith teaches them, than what their God teaches them. How in the world did we get to this place? How did we end up in this time in history where the Catholic Church in America is so weak and neutered because it is so disunified? In the beginning of my homily, I mentioned eight issues which are of extreme importance to our Catholic faith, to the good of society, and to our salvation. But what I didn't share with you is that they are not all at the same level. 
In other words, abortion, for example. The church teaches that abortion is intrinsically evil. In other words, it is always evil in every single circumstance. It does not say the same thing about the death penalty. Pretty close, but not the same thing. It doesn't say that the death penalty is intrinsically evil. The church teaches that the circumstances in which it would be permittable for the death penalty to be carried out are extremely rare, if practically non-existent, and then only for the protection of society, not to avenge the victims. And so it says, rare if practically non-existent. It means that it is evil in almost every circumstance, but not every circumstance, like abortion. And I want to talk today a little bit more in depth about abortion. Because still to this day, over 40% of self-identified Catholics think that abortion is wonderful. That is the best thing ever. Do they not realize it is murder? Do they not realize that it is genocide on a scale that makes the Nazis look like amateurs? Over 55 million human beings have been sacrificed for selfishness. Do these people not realize it, or do they know it and just don't care. Or perhaps there's some other reason. I'm the type of person who wants to know. I want to understand. How can people believe that something that is pure evil to be good? And so I've tried to understand. I've tried to learn. I've spoken with people. I've read, I've done research. And I think if we want to understand why so many Catholics still think abortion is wonderful, we need to look at the association between the Catholic Church and the Democrat Party. And the reason we need to do this is because not so long ago, the Catholic Church and the Democrat Party were almost seen as the same thing, especially in the Northeast of this country. And anybody from that region knows that to be true. But to understand this association, we need to go back in time, to the middle of the 19th century. This was a time of great immigration. Most of the immigrants were Catholic. Most of them were German and Irish. And most of them were poor. And this is something that frightened the so-called real Americans, the Americans who have been here for a few generations before that, the Protestant majority, it scared them. And many of their ministers incited their people with hate. And they said that the Catholic Church is a barrier to prosperity. They said that the Catholic Church is a threat to democracy. They believed that the Pope was the Antichrist, that the Catholic Church was evil, and that if these Catholic immigrants were allowed to continue to come to this great nation year after year after year, one day the Catholics would be the majority in this country, and then the Pope would be in charge. They preyed on people's fears, and the people gave in. They form political associations. They form political parties with the express purpose of destroying the Catholic Church in America. The most famous of these parties was called the Know Nothing Party. And they gained power in a number of big cities and regions around our nation. Their job was to destroy the church. And they bullied Catholics. They discriminated against them. They beat Catholics, they murdered Catholics, they lynched Catholics, they burned down Catholic churches, they burned down Catholic convents. Do you even know that? Are you even aware of that 
type of oppression in our nation? And the police didn't do anything. The church was poor and defenseless. Now there were some courageous bishops who got the men in their parishes together to protect the churches, to literally form a line around the church with clubs and axes and other weapons because the Protestant police wouldn't help. The Catholics were powerless, but they found power, especially political power in the Democrat Party. And some historians have said that the Catholics clung. They clung to the Democrat Party for protection, especially political protection. And it served them well in a number of circumstances. We can talk about the public school system and parochial schools. At the time, public schools were basically Protestant schools. They taught the Protestant agenda. They taught from the Protestant Bible. They taught that Catholics were bad and evil, and the Pope was the Antichrist in waiting. This association benefited the Catholics, and it benefited the Democrat Party as well. And this association continued and probably reached its zenith with the election of President John F. Kennedy. Now, a priest friend of mine who's also a scholar argues that it really reached its zenith with the Civil Rights Act. And he says he believes that Catholics who came of age during that time are the Catholics who are pro-abortion today. And I said, why? How? How is that possible? He says because the Civil Rights Act was such a monumental, historic act that was so needed to right such an injustice that people were viewed upon as not being equal by race. This was God's work, the Civil Rights Act. And a lot of Catholics participated in that, and they were rightly proud. And those Catholics continued to fight for justice in the world and for peace and they protested against wars that they believed to be unjust. And they fought against political abuses, corruption of power as manifested in Watergate. Their Catholic identity had been ingrained by those things. And those are things we continue to value as Catholics today. But then he says something that, was not, that I was not aware of. He said that these, this generation, these Catholics, didn't even have to deal with the question of abortion. It wasn't even on their radar screen. They didn't have to deal with contraception or sterilization or euthanasia or embryonic stem cell research or same-sex marriage or threats to religious liberty. None of that had come yet. And when it did come, especially in regards to abortion, do you know who was the first to really talk about the horrors of abortion? Was it the Catholic Church? Not really. It was the old enemy. It was the Protestants. And not just the Protestants, but it was the fundamentalist Baptists, many of whom who opposed the Civil Rights Act many of whom still at that time in history were saying that Catholics were bad and evil. If today you talk to a liberal Catholic and you mention the names Jerry Falwell, Pat Robertson, some of them are going to cringe. And so they're thinking, my church is not really talking about the horrors of abortion. My political party is not talking about the horrors of abortion. It's the enemy who is talking about the horrors of abortion. They can't be right. But there's been a lot of time that has passed since then. And the Catholic Church is the unquestioned leader in pointing out the horrors of abortion. And yet people continue 
to persist stubbornly <coughs> in their view that it's okay, that it's something that is good. And not only that, they continue to infect other people around them, their children and grandchildren. If we believe and teach and proclaim to others that darkness is actually light, that sin and evil is actually goodness, and conversely, if we believe and teach and proclaim to others that goodness is actually sin and evil, that light is actually darkness, then we are necessarily limiting and diminishing and potentially even extinguishing our participation in God's life. My brothers and sisters, we simply cannot follow Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, as fully as we are called to, if we believe in and adhere to all or even most of what the Democrats and Republicans teach. Certainly we need to embrace the good in those parties, in those ideologies. But if we accept everything, hook, line, and sinker, we are also necessarily embracing evil. We have an historic election in the next few weeks. And this is an opportunity. It is an opportunity for all of us to learn more fully about what the Catholic Church teaches and why it teaches it. To learn what is truly important, not just for the good of society, but for our very own salvation. To learn about what your political candidates of choice believe on these issues of supreme importance to the Catholic faith. Every week in the bulletin we are running information help educate you on the Catholic's Care, Catholic's Vote campaign, to help empower you to form your consciences based not on political ideology, but on the teachings of Jesus Christ. One of the primary purposes of the Catholic Church in the world is to discern what leads us into the fullness of God and what limits and diminishes and potentially even extinguishes our participation in God's life. That is one of the primary purposes of the Catholic Church. Not only is it not a primary purpose, it is not even a purpose of politicians and political parties. And that is one of the most important things you need to know.